Hey everyone, it's Jen from You So Much, and I'm here with a Wednesday wine time. I, I kind of like the idea of maybe doing this on a weekly basis going forward, having a little wine, a little conversation with you all. Maybe I'd even do it live. I don't know. It might be something I might try in the future. But for now, I thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit about networking. This is coming from a gal who's done a lot of networking. And I thought it was appropriate to have wine when we were talking about networking because sometimes you're drinking wine when you're networking. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes it's terribly boring at 7 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and you're having coffee instead and barely getting through, right? And then other days it's like 6 o'clock at night after you've worked really hard all day and yes, you want a glass of wine and yes, you want to talk to people, but sometimes you just kind of want to crawl under your covers and watch Scandal instead. And it's not that you want to avoid people, it's just that it's been a long, long day, right? So networking can be really tough because, especially if you're an introvert, you're around a lot of people who are draining your energy. And even if you're an extrovert, um, you sometimes it's just still not easy because it's uh, it feels like a lot of work. It feels like you have to like exchange business cards and do all this razzle dazzle in this really quick amount of time. And depending on how the event is set up, it can be really difficult to make an impression on someone else with like a two sentence introduction and a business card. And I've done a lot of networking. I've done a ton, and some of it I'm so glad I did. And some of the events were amazing, awesome events. And some of them were really, really not. And it, and it wasn't necessarily because of that. It was more because of me. And so I thought I would give the tips on the, some of the things that I've done that's really helped me do better networking and make the time super valuable, both for me and for the people that I was networking with. So I think just the word networking itself can kind of like freak people out. And so I kind of like to think of it as a party instead. It's a party that I'm going to and there's a possibility that I can meet my ideal client there. And that can be super, super helpful because instead of thinking of it as, oh my gosh, I'm going to get my business card and sell my stuff and tell them what I'm all about and hopefully they'll call me up later, that just, that just doesn't work. It's way too much pressure on you and it also doesn't create a fun environment. And really nobody wants to go to a party where you're not having fun. You know, I talked about this a little bit in my social media video, networking is very very similar. You want to go and have fun and make an impression on your ideal client just like you were at a party, just as if you were meeting them casually and having that conversation and just seeing what they're all about and seeing if it even makes sense for you to be working with them, both on your end and on theirs. And the truth is that all sales start with a conversation. You have to have a conversation with somebody in order to sell something to them, in order to work with them in the future. And whether that conversation is happening in person at a networking event or it's happening online on a webinar, it's all kind of the same. It's a conversation. And so it really starts with you conversing with your ideal client. And so think about it that way first. How would you actually approach a conversation with your ideal client, right? But before you even get there, I think it's important to think about what your intent of going there is, right? So first of all, if you're gonna go to a networking event, you gotta think to yourself, is my ideal client going to be there? So if your ideal client is a male CEO, it doesn't make sense for you to be going to an all women's networking group. If your ideal client is a mom, it doesn't make sense to be going to the Chamber of Commerce probably, right? You wanna be maybe going to mom's groups or uh, school events or something like that. You want to go to an event where your ideal client is more likely to meet you. And then before you get to the event, I think what's even more important is to sit down and write out your intent. What would you like to accomplish at that networking event? Who is it that you want to meet there? And what's the outcome? You know, I did this for an event back earlier this year. I went up to Sunny Leonard Doozy, who is a fantastic YouTuber and has a couple of really great courses on how to get more subscribers on your YouTube channel and how to do video better, basically. And she had an event in Vancouver. And before I went to that event, I sat down and I wrote down all of the things that I wanted to happen at that event. So I wrote down how I wanted to give massive value to the people that were there. I wanted to be able to make a good impression. I wanted to meet a couple of people that could be potential clients. I wanted to do a little bit of networking. I wanted to learn specific things at the event. And so when I went to that event, I asked questions about the things that I wanted to learn. I made sure to offer value to the people that were sitting at my table. And basically what came out of that was I got two 
clients out of the event. I got a ton of great advice. I stood up and asked her questions about things that I wanted to know about. And I walked away from that event with everything that I sat down to accomplish. So if you don't sit down and write out your intent for the event, then you might be disappointed because it might not be everything you wanted because you didn't think about what you wanted in the first place. The other thing that really helps me out a ton is to remember that not everyone at the networking event is going to be your ideal client, right? And that doesn't mean you just should skip over them and not talk to them. What it means is their best friend could be your ideal client. And so the more people that understand what you're all about, the more likely it is that people are gonna talk about you to the people that really do need your services. And so think about how you can offer value to every single person there. I know some people just hate that pressure of, oh, I need to go get two clients there and I need to make sure I pass out 10 business cards I need to talk to somebody who is a perfect client for me and I don't think that's necessarily true I think it's great to sit down with the intent of meeting your ideal client with the intent of walking away with me with a potential consultation with somebody but I also think it's important just to give value and if you can focus on giving value to the people that are there then naturally people are gonna want to give value back to you and so if you're engaged in a conversation with somebody ask them what project they're working on ask them what their goals are and then think about how you can help them achieve those goals is there something you could offer do you have a video you can send them do you have a friend you could connect them with? Do you know about this online course that could really help them? I'm always thinking that way when I'm meeting new people about how I can help them and especially how you can help them quickly. You're at this event where you might only have a couple of minutes to talk to each person and so how can you offer value them to them in a really quick way? One thing that I've seen work really well is I have a friend who actually has blank space on their business card so that they can write down their suggestions for that person, the things that they might be interested in on that card so it makes it so much easier for them to reach back out remind them oh this person said that you knew a good web designer or you told me about that event that was happening in two weeks tell me more about that right and so if you can specifically write that down on your business card that's a really great way to go the other thing I would highly suggest is to rethink the business card one thing that I've started doing is printing postcards instead of business cards because people don't keep business cards anymore they don't have a Rolodex they put it in their phone or they add it to their email list or whatever and so if you can hand out something else that is more useful that maybe has a little more room for you to give value to somebody else like a postcard then it makes it so much easier again for someone to reach out to you and ask for that specific thing that you were offering to them let's take a quick wine break don't you think now let's say that you did come across your ideal client what are you gonna say to them how are you gonna get their attention, right? And in many ways, this is exactly the same conversation you wanna be having with them in a webinar, uh, on a sales page, on your website, in an email. It's really focusing on your ideal customer and what it is that they are going through. What are the common problems that your ideal customer is facing? And what are the problems that you are helping them with so that they can achieve their goals, so they can become that person that they want to be and live that fantasy life? So for example, when you introduce yourself, you're involving your customer's story in that introduction to pique their interest. So you say something like, hi, I'm Jen, and I help my ideal client. I help bold creative entrepreneurs, and I found that they've experienced this particular problem. I found that they're struggling with sales on their website or their sales pages. So I help them by writing copy and content on their website and sales pages that speak to their customers fantasies and persuade them to buy so then you can do that for your own business and if they are your ideal customer then that is definitely going to pique their interest and they'll ask you more questions and then the conversation will expand from there right and so I think it's really important that it's a give-and-take just like any conversation you're listening you're adding value and you're offering them information that they're asking for one final tip too I would say is if it's possible to walk away from your conversations by offering to have another call with you later or invite them to opt into your email right there so that way you're not waiting until after as a follow-up you're doing it right there and so when you are following up it's a conversation you already have with them right you already talked about 
doing a consultation call. You already talked about them getting that freebie from you on your website or whatever it is. So if you can do that before you leave, then they're much more likely to follow through on it when you follow up with them later. And then again, I would really consider, think outside the box in terms of ways you can engage with them afterwards. So instead of just handing them a business card, hand them your postcard or tell them about your freebie on your website or send them a video from your YouTube channel, be creative in ways that you can continue to engage with them. And if you're asking them a lot of questions, then you'll find out things that they're interested in. It'll make it so much easier for you to give them value after the networking event is over. If you want to learn more about networking, I'm offering a class here in Portland. So if you live in the area, I'm doing that class. I'll put the information about that in the description below. I'm doing it in the next few weeks. And I also, every week, will go on Facebook Live and tell more tips about the class that I'm covering each week. And so if you wanna join my free Facebook group, it's called the Story Juice Club. I love it if you join, just send me a request. I'll put the link for that down below as well. Other than that, I appreciate you being here and joining me for a little wine. I think I'm gonna go get a little chocolate to match this because you know me and my chocolate. And we will see you again tomorrow for another video. And uh, maybe this will be a weekly thing. Maybe we'll have a little Wednesday wine. Maybe I'll go to a winery even sometime. Wouldn't that be fun? We have a ton of them around here. Well, it'll be fun for me anyway. <laughs> All right, thanks you guys. See you tomorrow, bye.